Now, we want to talk about Smith Wigglesworth for just a second. Smith Wigglesworth, what he said about faith, and it's pretty amazing if you listen to it, because this is a secret. He said, how can one come to possess great faith? Now, you can, the way this is written, you can picture this old guy, right? And when I picture him, he's so much like Summerall that it's, I almost see them together. But he says, how can one come to possess great faith? Now, listen, here's the answer to that. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Now, that is exactly the way Summerall used to say things. Because he would answer the question, he'd go, huh? Well, uh, what do you mean? No, no. He says, faith must grow by soil, moisture, and exercise. Now, if you've heard me teach on this, this is exactly what we've taught. Why? Because I learned faith from Dr. Summerall, who learned faith from Smith Wigglesworth. And so, what does that mean? Well, you have to have the right soil. You have to have the right moisture, or we would say today, the right nutrition, the right nutrients for it. And then there has to be the exercise of it, right? And so, because if you learn, okay, now first off, you're the soil. We know that from Jesus' words, that we are the soil. And so there has to be the right seed going into the right soil. Because if you're the wrong soil, it kind of doesn't matter what seeds you've got, it won't produce. Now, it may produce 30, 60, or 100 fold, depending on it. But notice, that's only the good soil. The, there's four kinds of soil the Bible talks about that Jesus mentioned, and three of them produce nothing. One of them produced 30, 60, or 100 fold. And so we have to decide to be that kind of soil. Now, most, and this is where I wrote, now I get to actually read it and say it, most people don't want to work to prepare what's now so there can be a great what's next. Oh my gosh, that's good. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay, we're going to start hanging out. I like you. <laughs> You'd be surprised how. Seldom I actually hear that. So, 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 no, no, seriously. But now notice, I'll read again. Most people don't want to work to prepare what's now so there can be a great what's next. Why? Most people want what's next so much that they ignore building what's next with what's now. And that's the actual quote that the man said. I still can't remember who it was. But anyway, in Proverbs 24.10 it says, If you faint in the day of adversity... Your strength is small. Pretty simple, huh? Now, how do you faint in the day of adversity? Things come up. It could be big things. It could be small things. It could be a lot of things at one time. It could be a lot of small things at one time. But if you faint in the middle of it, how do you faint? Well, you faint, number one, by not standing in faith, by not speaking truth, by not speaking the Word of God, by speaking what the problem is presenting, rather than by speaking what God's answer is. And you also faint usually because you end up in these situations, uh, let's, let's say in relationships, that there's a situation or something. Well, I don't like what he said. Well, guess what? That's you fainting. You say, why? Well, because it's not about, <clears throat> well, let me put it this way. If the message is right, uh, you got, there's, there's no option. You have to choose the message. Now, you, you could say, I don't like him, the messenger, but the message, you see? But now, if you start saying, I don't like him, well, now, that's a whole other area of sin that, you know, we're not dealing with today, okay? But a lot of people get wrapped up in this stuff, and they end up fainting. And here's the one thing that I've seen, and this is, you know, of all the people that started when I did, none of them's preaching today. None of them. None of them's doing anything. They all went into jobs and different things and quit preaching. And, you know, then you wonder, okay, why were they preaching to begin with? Because I'm telling you, I, I'm just, can I just be honest with you real quick? I got four minutes I left, roughly. So. Can't, okay, so I'm going to just put this out there. I've told y'all before that I've quit a thousand times. And I just keep showing up. You know, and every time I quit, my phone rings. And it's somebody trying to die. And, and you know, <laughs> I think I'm out and they pull me back in. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's the way it works every time, okay? I quit this week. Now, this was a first because I actually texted it to my staff. I said, just so everyone's clear, I quit. Why? Because I'm fed up. 
I'm fed up with religious politics. I'm fed up with people that just want to be somebody and want to get a name and use our name to do something with it, as if our name means anything to anybody other than carnal people. So I just, I'm just fed up. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with it. Just don't want to do it anymore. Now, that doesn't mean, what, what did that mean? didn't mean I'm not going to pray for people. It's too late to do that. But, and the funny thing, I told God, because this is what happened. When you quit, <laughs> I told God, I'm like, I'm done. I, I, ain't, I ain't doing that no more. I, will, I, I, I ain't doing that. I'll write books or something, but I ain't dealing with people no more. <laughs> I'm done. And I can think I, of one exception. Today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the truth. Because I'm going, I'm, you know, I've got my books. I've got a bunch of books here, but I've got my books at my library at home. And, I, and I'm just throwing a temper to you know, I probably shouldn't even be telling you this, <laughs> but I'm just throwing a temper tantrum. And, I, you know, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm walking around my house and I, I'm, I stay busy. And, you know, I'm reading, I'm studying, you know, I'm staying busy. And I'm walking around my house and I'm like, and there's books. And I look at it and I'm like, I'm not going to pick that book up. <laughs> Not going to pick it up. Not going to. And I'll say, I'm serious. I'm walking around my house. And I'm like, nope, not going to read that. Not going to do that. Mm -mm, not going to do it. And I'm just throwing a temper tantrum and walking through there. And then it just. And I, I, I told my wife, I said, I can't stop. I can't. I try to think of other stuff. I can't. It's. You know, Paul wrote, a prisoner of the Lord. Yes. I'll be honest, that's the way I feel a lot of times. Because I, I, I tell people all the time, I feel like I'm a train on a track. that I want to get off, and I'm like, whoop, there it went. Whoop, there went the exit. Mm -hmm, there it went. And I'm still on the track, still going the same way, because there is, I don't understand any, I, I can't think another way. You know, I have moments of carnality, just like I just talked about as Jesse Duplantis would say, and throw fits of carnality, yeah. you know, and, but yet, try as I may, I can't quit. And I keep moving forward, and it just, you know, I've told God, why won't you leave me alone? <laughs> and then he goes back to, brings out the thing. He said, I told you that apart from me, you would, you would be useless. That was in the prophecy that John Lake gave in 1934. He said, except for God's use, he would be useless. Well, if the other parts apply to me, so does that. Amen. And I've seen it. And this it's not something I wanted, okay? But I will tell you that, I mean, I, I believe in free will. Understand, I believe in free will. The problem is, Years ago, I told God, I give you my will. Right, right. So that was my free will, giving my will to God. Yes. And, and he took me seriously, and he hadn't given it back. 